Once you've installed the Document Library Pro plugin and added some documents, you can start listing them on the front end of your website, whether that is for just your staff members and colleagues to see or for the wider public. When you install the plugin, a page was created for you and we're going to go to that now. So we're going to go to Pages in the WordPress admin and we can see that there's a page labelled Document Library page here. I'm going to click View on that page now. So this is our Document Library page um, with the settings which we chose on the Document Library Pro plugin settings page. So we've got a table because I chose not to structure the Document Library into folders and it's got the filters I selected so that people can find documents easily. It's got the columns that I chose and also it's got a download button for each document, whether that's a document directly hosted on my website or whether it's a third party link to a document on Dropbox or YouTube or wherever. I'm going to make a few changes just to show you how flexible it is. Firstly, I think the table looks a bit cramped and I think that's because of this fairly pointless sidebar in the right hand column. So this bit depends on which WordPress theme you're using, but most themes have a choice of a full width template or a template with a sidebar. So I'm going to go to page attributes and my theme has a full width template. You need to refer to the documentation for your own theme if you're not using the storefront theme like me, because the method might be different. But um, with storefront, that's how you do it. Wrong link. So then I'm going to go back to the page. And I'll have it open in a new tab so I can easily switch between. As you can see, this immediately looks better. So we've got the document library. It takes up the full width of the page. And even though I've got quite a lot of data being displayed, it fits really nicely. And in fact, the column widths are calculated automatically um, so that they fit the space. Although you can override this if you want, and that's in the documentation. Now I'm going to make a few changes, again, just to show you what's possible. Let's go back to the plugin settings page. So I'm going to go to the WordPress dashboard. And then I'm going to go to documents settings. And I'm going to click on the document libraries tab, which is where we control the display of our documents. I'm going to click the folders option. I'm also going to add some custom column titles. So if we look at our document library, it's got title, summary, categories, file size, file type and link. You don't have to have that. So you've got your list of columns here. You can change any of them as you want. So I'm going to add a colon after the title column and then write document title. If I can spell it correctly. And I'm going to change. Uh, what else should I rename? Let's change file size just to size. So each time I'm adding a colon after that column and then writing what I want the column to be called. And after file type, I'm going to write type. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'll just go back and show you. See, these have gone onto two lines, which isn't that pretty. So I'm going to shorten it. I could equally have increased the widths of these two columns, but I'm just going to shorten these names so that they fit. So let's go back down to the bottom and click Save Changes. And once it's saved, we go back to the document library page and I'm going to refresh. So here we've got folders because I ticked the folders box on the settings page. So if I click on them, that will open up the folders. Um, you can only have one open at a time so that your users basically don't get lost. But you can see that we've got document title, which is the custom heading I added, and also size and type. The top row looks much better, I think, because these are shorter ones and they fit on one row. So that's much nicer. You might notice um, things that you don't really need. Like if I've only got four documents in a category, I don't really need show 25 per page so I can you know that's, that's just meaningless isn't it that's more relevant to large document libraries I may also just want to tidy it up by not having that for example so I'm going to go back to my settings page and scroll almost to the bottom right so I'm going to hide the page length and hide the totals which are the two things that I just said I didn't want I'll click save again and then I'm going to refresh I'll open up again and as you can see those bits below have gone so it looks a bit cleaner. 
So that's how you control your document library centrally on the settings page. Next, I'm going to show you how to use a shortcode to create document libraries. And that's useful if you want even more flexibility. So let's say you want to manually list documents from a particular category on different parts of your site. Well, let's do that now. So I'm um, wrong page. I'm going to go back to the page, which is where the document library um, is added. So this is this page in the WordPress admin, basically. So the default shortcode, which was added by the plugin, plugin is doc underscore library. And I'm going to write here. Oh, it's doc category. So doc underscore category equals finance. Um, that will just display documents from the finance category. And let's also disable the folders option because I might have a main document library page elsewhere on my site where I'm using the folders to show all the documents within their correct folder category structure. But maybe for this one, I only want to list one category. Well, the folders are meaningless, aren't they? So I'm going to write folders equals false instead of true, which would be um, how you show the folders. So let's click update now. So I've edited the short code, which is on this page. So let's refresh the page and see how it changes. So now we just have the finance documents listed without folders. Let's make it a little bit more advanced next. So this is the WordPress Gutenberg editor. The method will be slightly different if you're using a different page builder, such as um, Divi Builder or Elementor. And so build your pages however you do on your website so i'm going to have a heading called finance documents and that was done by adding a heading block and i'm going to put it in the right place and then let's have a meeting documents or oh wrong one sorry i should have chosen a heading block first there and then i'm going to call it meetings and next underneath meetings i'm going to add another short code block so I'm going to type short code. There it is. So now I'm going to copy my short code from the previous one I just did and put it here. But instead of finance, I want to show meetings. And let's click update. So I changed which category I'm displaying. To find the um, slug for the category, you need to go to documents, categories in the admin, and then that's where you'll find what. So I remembered that mine were called finance and meetings, but don't just guess. Find the correct name uh, slug for your category. And then I'll refresh my page again. And now I have two documents. So you can see how this is useful if you don't want the folder structure. You can list documents by category with headings between. You could even put introductory text or whatever underneath the headings. Um, you could subdivide it even further. And the other great thing is you can see here I've got finance documents with just a few, but I've got loads of meetings. So the categories and tags drop downs are useful because with the categories, you can see that I can narrow it down by um, the minutes, by the subcategories. So agendas and minutes. So I've got loads of minutes and just the one agenda and I can further subdivide it to find actually let's go to minutes um, so you've got all different options so if I just want the directors meetings then I would use both together and that's how it would filter that down but so that's really useful for the meetings but it's completely pointless for the finance documents so let's hide these in the short code before we finish so back to my page, I'm going to go search underscore box equals false. Actually, to be good, I should put it in quotes, although it's not actually essential unless there's gaps in it. Um, and then we're going to go filters equals and then within quotes false. So I've done search underscore box equals false and filters equals false. I'll update the page again and then refresh. And now oh, I should remove the reset button as well, which you can do. So now we've got filters for meetings, but not for finance documents. And I'm going to hide the reset button. Reset underscore button equals false as well. There, that will look a bit neater. So now we have 
the documents from finance category listed without any way to narrow them down because you can see them all. And for meetings, we've got the categories and tags. So if you want to control your document libraries individually, then that is how to do it. Of course, I don't expect you to remember everything I just said about the different shortcode options. And there are many shortcode options which I haven't shown you how to use. So to do it, go to the document library knowledge base and you will find a big list of the shortcode options. So you can set pretty much everything you want to in the shortcode. You can set different columns for each shortcode. You can choose which categories, tags, or many other different ways to control which documents appear in each one. You can control the link. So you might want to have the file type icon in some of your document library and the button in others and so on. So all of these are shortcode options. You don't need to remember them. Just go to the document library knowledge base and click through and then you will find um, exact instructions and shortcode examples that you can copy.